I look at a lot of mini PCs and we've kind of entered this area where we're seeing a lot of two to $350 mini PCs that have decent AMD CPUs. And some of them have graphics as well. And that's what we're looking at today. This is the Minis Forum UM750L Slim. So the version that we have has the Ryzen 5 7545U. And we also have 16 gigabytes of DDR5 memory at 6400 megaturns first, and then one terabyte M.2. The M.2 is PCI Express Gen 4. Above and beyond that, this thing has 2.5 gigabit ethernet, which is something I didn't expect in this price range, and USB 4. Let's just go through the specs first, and then we'll get to the, the fun stuff in just a second. I use OEM keys for a few different reasons, but this is the price you're gonna pay for Windows 11 Pro if you get a retail key. Let's check those prices on whokeys.com. So you can grab a key for Windows 11 Pro, but we also have Windows 10 Pro, which does unlock Windows 11 still. And we've got Windows 11 Home. Check this out. We now have LTSC, and this is the IoT edition. Then we have Windows 11, this is the 24H2 version. Now these don't come with any bloat, no AI nonsense. They are the core Windows experience, and this is enterprise grade stuff, so you got all the networking features. You're not gonna to pay this price either because we have a 25% off coupon code. So when you click on buy it now, use the coupon code TS25 and let's watch that price come down. That's nice. Now, if you want to grab Office, they've got Office 2016 and they also have Office 2019. These are the offline versions, so you won't be paying the monthly subscription and they don't have the integrated AI stuff that watches everything you do for training, Microsoft says. Let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro. All right, just put in my card info. There we go. Click on view keys and codes. Once you get to the user center, click on get the key. See your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press start, and then type activate. You'll see activation settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here, it says not active. Just click on change product key. Paste in our product key and then click on activate. Hey, look at that, active. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. The dimensions, it's 130 by 126.5 by 50.4. It's actually bigger than I thought it would be with this set of specs, but that's allowed them to put a slightly bigger fan in there. And it's really quiet. You'll see that in just a second. The net weight is 0.67 kilograms, which is like eight bananas, three and a half banana. I don't know. Depends on the size of the banana, but Americans have very, very funny ways to measure things. When it comes to wireless, you have Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. So all the latest stuff there. So on the front there, we got our power button, that little dot right there. That's a reset. Then we have two USB 3.2 type A on the front and then a 3.5 millimeter combo jack for headphone microphone. Then right there is a clear CMOS button on the front, which is kind of cool to have. If you flip it around to the back, well, you can see we've got two USB 2.0 ports for mouse, keyboard, whatever. I kind of like having these because we don't need the crazy ports for everything. Then we have lots of options when it comes to displays. That USB, that's USB 4. Below that's DisplayPort 1.4. And then we have HDMI 2.1. So the HDMI and the DisplayPort from the USB 4 will both do 8K at 60 hertz. They'll also do 4K at 120 hertz. And then the display port right there will do up to 4K at 120 hertz. Beside that, that is 2.5 gigabit ethernet. And then we have a 19 volt DC input right there. So it supports 65 to 100 watts uh, input of power delivery plus 15 watt output power delivery. Now, when you remove the hood there, you're gonna see that we have an extra slot for another M.2. So it comes with one pre-installed, but you have a spot where you can install yet another. And these are PCI Express Gen 4, so that'll give you data transfer speeds of up to 7,000 megabytes per second, but we'll do some tests on that, see how fast it runs. So taking the unit apart was pretty easy. There's four screws on the bottom, then I actually had to pry the bottom off. It's all plastic and there's no metal frame or anything like that on the inside. So you can see on the inside there, we have um, something interesting going on. We have the Kingston M.2 and there's a big thermal pad there and there's a little piece of metal on the top there that it's mounted to to just help with the dissipation and above that there's a fan that's going to blow down on those components and it's a separate fan there's a fan on this side and there's a fan on the other side where the CPU is but this will help keep your M.2 and, and everything nice and cool. Now up on the top there, you can see your Wi-Fi. You can actually mount a second M.2 above the Wi-Fi. There's also another thermal pad installed right where that other M.2 is gonna go. So you just use that and you'll be good to go. Let's hop in and play some games first because that's more fun. And then we'll do some benchmarks and just see what we can do. Let's take a look at Unigen Valley and look at that score. 37.8 FPS on 1080p high, score of 1579 minimum 21. Point zero. This makes me think we might be able to game on this. All right, let's try out near here. We're running this uh, on the low setting and uh, yeah, 41, 40 FPS, but it feels very smooth. Yeah, I need to install my mod so that I can uh, have better mouse movement. But yeah, it's running all right. Doesn't look amazing on the low setting, but plays really well. Okay, I got to get a new HDMI thing or a new uh, USB thing. All right, let's see if we can run Doom Eternal on medium. And it's kind of a maybe. I mean, medium looks really good in my opinion. Actually, this game looks good on low. 
The Ed Tech stuff is just really good. Get over there. I don't want to waste my ammo. Um, Doom actually feels pretty good, even though I'm getting 30 FPS. So 36, 40, it's not really dropping below. I need ammo. Uh, it feels pretty good on low. Let's get rid of that thing. Yeah, get that out of there. Stop bothering me. Um, but yeah, we're getting in the 40s and 50s on low, so that's nice. There's guys, these guys are everywhere. So yeah, this game is totally playable. I decided to pick this area because it, you know, it's one of the most demanding. But uh, yeah, it feels good to me. All right, let's see here um, how we're doing with the Midnight Walk. And yeah, so this modern Unreal Engine game works just fine. I keep showing the same spot because I haven't gotten any farther in the story, but yeah, this works. And on the low settings right here, like we're running, it still looks interesting because the graphics are stylized and all pretty, but we're getting into the 30s, which is just fine for a game like this that's story-driven and has a lot of interesting characters in a strange world. It's sort of a horror game. There's some scary elements you have to hide and stuff. Even some depth of field and everything else here are 36 FPS. This is a modern Unreal Engine game and it's running just fine. This looks better than a lot of the stuff I've seen that has like, you know, every fancy modern effect going at the same time. If you have really good art direction, you don't need every fancy effect at the same time. Where are you going? I actually think this game is really pretty. So, and now we're getting 55 FPS. If I look back this way, we're getting in the 40s. So, yeah. So as you can see here, with things set to low, it still looks this good. So the Midnight Walk, modern Unreal Engine game, works just fine. One of the nice things about making these videos is I get to recommend some games, and Rise of Industry 2 is upon us. Now, if you ever played like a city builder game and thought, you know, I would like this if there was maybe more micromanaging, if it was a little bit nerdier, and if it was set in the 80s and all about crazy, you know, business mogul stuff. Red tape. All it adds up to is a stack of paperwork. Which got me thinking, who's making the paper these things are printed on? And who's making the desk they sit on for months without getting read? I'll tell you who. You are. Well, that's what this game is. Getting through the first, like, tutorial walkthrough is rough. It's like an hour of just straight-up information is grueling. And it's something that I think is going to stop a lot of players. But once you get through that and start to get the hang of things, then I think it can be quite a bit of fun. So the point here is to, you know, create an industry and then do something. But when you're, you know, like, creating an industry... You have to do everything. Like if you want to make uh, something that's made out of plastic, well, you're going to have to go and dig into the ground and get the the oil out of the ground so you can refine that into plastic. So you need you can if you have like excess oil or something, you can set up a contract so that you're selling your excess oil and making some money there so to pay your employees or whatever. If you have ever played like City Skylines or something and thought, you know, I'd really like to just focus on one business and make it way nerdier and a lot more micromanaging, then this is probably the game for you. If you don't like a lot of micromanaging, and you don't care about how like stuff is made, and you just wanna like chill and play a more casual game, probably not the game for you. All right, let's look at these numbers that correspond to the temperature that's been collected after 22 minutes and 34 seconds. Yes. So this is A to 64. We're just doing a little stress test right here. And this is not measuring correctly, so we're going to use hardware info to take a look at the temperatures. And we can see the maximum after 22 minutes and 39 seconds or something is 84.5 degrees Celsius. And right now we're at 83.9. Kind of just staying in the 80s, the mid 80s. That's where it is. That's about average and within spec. That is the decibel level, just hanging out at the desk. Now I'm going to take it and put it about a foot away from the, the unit and we'll just see how the fans are sounding. All right, there we go. 46.6 decibels. Um, it's not that loud. You can definitely hear this while it's, you know, cranking up. It's got some fans in there. They're not entirely unpleasant, which is interesting. You would think that with smaller fans, we get that higher pitch war, but it just sounds like a, a fan in a system. So yeah, you can definitely hear it, but it's not that loud. All right, so we got our PCI Express Gen 4x4 speeds right here. You can see 6,072 on the read and 5,313 on the right. Let's have a look at those IOPS over here. Uh, exactly what I expected, looking pretty good. Our maximum temperature was 76, and the idle right now you can just see is pretty good in the 40s. Let's take a look at these benchmarks. We'll start off with Geekbench 6. Single core score, 2506, and the multi-core is 9050. Scroll down here, here's all the individual tests. Go ahead and pause if there's something in particular you're interested in. And then over here, that's our open CL score, 13467. And again, there are the individual tests. And Cinebench. Now this is quite a bit faster than the 
similar Ryzen 5 systems that I've been testing recently. That's probably because it's a, a higher wattage and higher frequency and all that. It's a 7545U instead of the 73 whatever I tested last time. And you can see this one's quite a bit faster than the 7700K actually. I didn't expect this because uh, the one I tested last week was like the 7330 I think and it was slower than the 7700K but this one is quite a bit faster and this is a very old CPU but still respected right? We still respect it. Over here we've got our multi-core score and you can see where that stacks up. Above the i9-9880H and just below the Threadripper right there. Final score 10869. Let's have a look at superposition. Now I'm running this at 1080p on the medium setting and I don't expect anything crazy. 18.01 is the minimum and the average is 21.07 FPS score of 2816. If you're playing along at home, let me know what you got. All right, so there you have it. I think we're starting to see some really cool stuff in this price range. I want to lament for just a second because I feel like about a year ago, just for a little bit more money, you could get a 7840HS, which had a much faster GPU. And you know, a lot of times it wouldn't have USB 4 or anything like that. So this one has a lot of features and a lot of really awesome ports. It's, it's got top of the line when it comes to basically everything. For this price, it's kind of weird to see the PCI Express, you know, the dual PCI Express Gen 4 for the M.2. It's kind of weird to see the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. It's weird to see the USB 4. You know, it's there's a lot of things that I'm like, really, for this price, you can do all that stuff. So I think it's a good value when it comes to that. But if you want like to go one step beyond and you want like a 780M or something when it comes to the integrated graphics, you're gonna to need to spend a little bit more money and look for a 7840HS, which, you know, Minis Forum makes one, several other companies make make one. But if this one meets your needs when it comes to just everything you can do, I mean, it'll do a lot of emulation and stuff as well. And if you don't need like the crazy AAA gaming, this one's pretty good. You can do editing and all kinds of other things on this. Hard to argue with when it comes to like all the stuff you can do at this price range. And it's kind of crazy how many of these we're seeing um, that can just do so much for not a lot of money. And, you know, Many's Forum is one of the two or three brands that are on the top of my list. So while you're still here, I'll tell you about some sales we're having. I'm still doing these mice for half price, mostly because I just forget to turn off the sale, but it's coupon code Happy Mouse that'll show up while you're checking out. So half of this down to 20 bucks. Also, we got a bunch of new t-shirts on here. Let's just show you some of these. There we are. New t-shirts showing up. This t-shirt doesn't get enough love because I don't talk about it enough, but it's one of my favorites. If you find someone in public who gets it, then it's like, yes, you could be friends for life. This one as well. Meet someone in public, you've just found a friend for life. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to connect people with these insane t-shirts. This one right here. Just find people who understand these shirts. That's that's the thing. You're like, yeah, did you, did you get the joke? Okay, we can be friends. I'm just making shirts to help you find friends. Anyway, head over to epicpants.com and I'll see you in the comments.